So welcome every single person in this room to the Converse All-Star Series. Create next with Joe and Boyega. Make some noise, please. Mm. Julie, I like the way you said everyone should just really just try Oh, and, wow. You know, I like I like the way you said that. Hello. Oh, you, you know, do you do this thing where you just walk in before I even give you the, the props that you no, deserve? No, no. I thought I thought that you were, that oh, was no, it. No, no. Yeah, yeah, no, okay, you know what I mean? It's cash now. It's cash now, man. No, but I need to do it properly, okay. I wanted him to sort of appear out of nowhere, like the magic person that he is, but um, he's clearly very <laughs> humble. I want you guys to make a lot of noise for a very special human being. We are joined by the one and only John Boyega. Oh, so there's the loud claps. Oh, so there they are. So he's waiting for John, I get it now. Okay, so I'm just basic. Would you like some water? No, I'm good, you know. Are you I sure? Had, I've had quite a lot today, yeah. I'm good. Quite a lot Testing. of water or quite just quite a lot of water, water, oh. yeah, yeah. How much are you trying to drink? No, nah, no, 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 no motivation for that. No, no. You're not like a two litre per day guy. No, 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 no. I'm on holiday. I just came off my birthday month, so I'm kind of trying to transition back into a, a more strict work ethic. That ain't happening. Yet. <laughs> I'm procrastinating a little. Can bit. Can you tell us just, just, just give us one thing you did on your birthday that you probably wouldn't want people to know that you did? Just one. Um, uh, I went out. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I, I through past lips, through past lips. I basically went. I, rather than inviting all my family and friends, you know, to where I was at, mm. I just basically went to all of my loved ones all around the world and done what I I like doing with those individuals. So whether it was a party, a link up, you know, some form of club, we went and done what we've done, man. Some form of club. I'm not gonna I'm 30, 30, man. It's 30. I'm now, not gonna. Man. You're I'm big only boy, 30. Man. I'm big boy now. 30. Three, when I saw that three come on, I was like, you know what? Oh, guys, make some noise. It's the big 3 0. 3 0, yeah. Oh, yeah. that was, sounds like a really nice birthday. No, nah, I had a good birthday. Sounds good very good expensive as yeah. well, but you know. Oh, you know. Yeah, I know. So you don't want any water? No, I'm okay. I'm okay, okay, good. Mm -hmm. I'm glad. So, guys, we are coming to you live from London with a very limited audience in the room, which is why I'm very happy to see all of your faces, even though it's technically raining outside. Yeah. We're also streaming over Discord to Beyond Creators as well, who are part of the All Stars community. So, let's give them a round of applause as well, please. <laughs> So this event is part of Converse's ongoing commitment to giving young creatives access and help them to inspire us to create next. We're going to speak to our lovely guests right now. We've caught up with you about all the fun stuff. Mm. And let's get into yeah. more fun stuff. Yeah. Let's start at the very beginning, John. Do you remember the conversation that you had with Converse about this project? Yeah. Do you remember what it was that you said or what do you think it was that you said that made them think we have to do Create Next Film Project? I think it, it was interesting because I feel like there definitely was mutual interest. Um, I had just come off of a school tour. I was uh, touring schools in Southwark because I actually wanted to create an independent initiative. Um, so I toured like maybe five, six schools, just trying to figure out if the kids even wanted me mm. up in their business. <laughs> um, and by the time I was thinking and trying to um, brainstorm the right initiative to help, Converse approached me kind of knowing that I had had an interest in that. Okay. And mutually, we were kind of bouncing ideas off each other. And then this kind of like, you know, naturally developed. So what was it about Converse put you on the spot? What was it about Converse that made you think these are the right people to do this with? Well, it's the track record, number one for me, that there was genuine interest to do right. so. And, and not just an initiative where you put the logo of your brand next to it and then you think that that's <laughs> legit. It's where you actually put your finances down. Um, you have a system, a strategy in place. Um, and I noticed through each meeting that we had, through each form of feedback, there was a, a growing genuine interest from them. They had already probably hired individuals in the team who right. had, you know, specific interest to get the right kind of creative. So I feel like it's like meeting somebody that has the same passion for you mm. for something and you agree to go on an endeavor. So, so cool. And I'm glad that you walked further down that line because sometimes those opportunities come to us and we think maybe it's still not right, but you saw it and you said, yeah, this feels right. For yeah, you. I mean, look, look, you know, look at them. It's, it's a great opportunity for them to um, realize their talents, create films that, they feel we need to be seen. Mm -hmm. And I think that at this stage in their career, especially for, for the future, is a, is a good initiative to have. Do you remember early days of your career when you first realised that actually there's not enough representation of people that look like us in mm. film? What were some of those experiences for you? I think probably after, maybe after Attack the Block, mm. because I think getting Attack the Block, it was like, I've got a job, right? Yeah. Like as an actor. So that, that in itself was just enjoyable. But as I started to see what could be more than Attack the Block in the UK, mm. that's when I started to realise, you know, everyone's talking about America, America, America. I'm trying to, like, see if we can establish more here. Right. But you, then you could see that there was a little bit of a disparity there. 
And just for people that hear representation so much that they've blocked that word out now, it's like, you just block a report as spam. You know, there's certain words that after a while you're like, I don't want to hear anyone say... Representation. Representation. Diversity. 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 Yeah, I hear it, I hear it, yeah. <laughs> um, Talk to us a bit more about what does that actually mean? When you are on set, when you're at work, when you receive your script, when your agent or your manager messages you, what does it mean when you feel like there's not enough representation? What does that actually mean? It means things like this. If I have a movie in which there maybe is an African language, I, don't, I need a dialect coach, I, I expect my dialect coach to be black, to be from that culture. It means that when I go on set as a black actor and, you know, we've got someone that is struggling to do a hairline <laughs> when I know that there's a black individuals who can cut hair. Right. It, it means that. That's where the disparity is. I think the blatant thing that we're finding is that there's a lot of more people getting jobs that they're not qualified for. And I just want to see an industry in which allocates these qualities mm -hmm. and talents to the right people. And that doesn't mean you just choose filmmakers based on race and just put them in there. No, mm -hmm. we'll want to find the individuals that are talented, that have put in the work, that have had their own independent path before they met us mm -hmm. and something to show mm -hmm. for, for their interests before we then go and you know invest in their futures. And this is something, I'm glad you said it just now because it's something I want to touch on quickly. I think when people see models talking about, you know, I went to do a catwalk and no one knew how to do my hair. We're not saying that people who aren't black can't do black people's hair. No. We're saying that people who aren't black are not qualified to do it mm -hmm. at that present time. At that present time. But they're still given the job to do it. Yeah. And that... And if it was the flip, you would feel some type of way. So exactly. what are we doing? Yeah. So for me, it's just about building something that, that, that provides a, an access point for individuals that were kind of restricted to it's who you know or, you know, it's the money that you're going to give to this person that's going to go to LA and get you to LA. It's right. like just trying to get much more uh, a realistic vi vision for our dreamers. I'm interested to hear how your Nigerian home has made you who you are today. Everything. You know. <laughs> Ain't no see, so you're a bad man seeing you. <laughs> I mean, specifically to, <laughs> we know John Boyega, sorry to talk about you in the first person, but we know you as the person who stands up for what they, for what they believe in, who speaks out for what they believe in, who collaborates with people who he feels need to be shone in a way, a light shone on them in a way that they hadn't been done before. Um, give us just, and this is maybe just a question for me, so I, it helps me in my Nigerian brain of like, yes, Julie, that's why your Navigating mom, that's why your mom was shouting at you yeah, for yeah. 15 years. Give us some of the things that, coming from that background and that home, um, what do those qualities put in you to make you stand up and say, this isn't fair and I want this done now and I want it done this way. I think it's, I think it's what I saw specifically from my dad. I think my dad, as much as being a Nigerian man and all of that stuff that we know about, yeah. he's also a, a, a very committed community man. Right. And he's a preacher and a minister and we all know what that kind of job in, entails. Like I grew up with counselling happening in the other room like every right. other night. So, you know, he's always been kind of open to helping. Um, so I think definitely seeing it growing up would definitely be a, some form of, of, of reference for the stuff that I do. I'm not exactly him. I mean, he's advanced, you know what I mean? He, <laughs> he travels the world, goes to Africa, and does. he has the craziest stories in terms of his path with that. Mm -hmm. But me, I'm just doing that light work. You're position. getting there, though. Yeah, you soon, are getting soon there. Come. Yeah. Soon come. You're nearly there. Don't worry. It's <laughs> yeah. nice. It's well, really I, en I enjoy the journey, honestly. Like, I've, I've, I've taken much more benefit in kind of sitting back and going, it's a process, man. And right. It's not just, you know, interludes. I always talk to my friends about the fact that when you live in a time where change is happening, sometimes it's hard to see it. Um, you know, sometimes yeah. we don't take the time to look back 10 years, five years even, and say, actually, things have really, really changed. And I've had loads of conversations with people who maybe, black people who maybe feel a little bit like, it's tokenism, that's not a real olive branch, you know? This, mm. is, this is just, they're saying it because that's the trend at the moment. But if we put all those emotions to the side, mm. What for you have been those changes from Attack the Block days to, you know, Top Boy premieres now? What have you seen in acting, in film that have really said what we're doing, the work that we're doing here is working and is making a difference? I think for me, because uh, from a young age, when growing up in London, I kind of decided to take it seriously. And then I connected with other young people that took it seriously whether it was through drama school or through kind of like ex extracurricular activities mm -hmm. outside of school. And I think for me, that's been it. It's just the people that I've met who right. have now grown into, you know, amazing megastars. Like if I take Daniel Kaluuya, for example, um, I was outside the Royal Court when he was doing Sucker Punch. I waited for him just to get 
you know, my little paper signed and she's yeah. like, bro, how did you do that? And I'm like, <laughs> what agency should I, I was asking all the questions yeah. and to be a part of that mix and to see how, you know, different people have grown. Um, I think that in itself is, is, is the happy space. It is. Can we make some noise actually? Because there's yeah. been loads of progress. Yeah, man. Loads. Well, every time they say he's British, I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> I love he, it. yes, he is. Yes, yes he that's, is. That's I'm just correct. proud. I'm proud of the boys. You know, you know? I feel like John's the kind of guy that points out when someone's British, even when no one's asking. Yeah, yeah. You know, no, like oh, that, yeah, she was good, in, and you know, she's from Peckham. Yeah, yeah. you got to because and and also you know we're, we're still early on. We don't you know it's, it's it's still a few, but just to celebrate where we're at in comparison to. You know, near six, seven years ago, it's, exactly. it's, there's, there's been some movement. Do you think London will always be your base? Do you think you'll always love this place and want this place to be, you know, where you're from? Would yeah, you feel I, like you might end up At this up stage, I have there? multiple bases at this, <laughs> this stage. That's London's why you celebrated one, your birthday in five different places. Yeah, L- London, London's, London's always home, as I said. You know, London's always home. But I think, you know, from pre-pandemic to now, I think stateside things just started to amp up there, so it's a lot more time there and you know you come to London to see fam and get your ground in but mm. you have to go back out there for work so then in terms of work because mm. I get this a lot or I say this to my friends as well it's like are you gonna you know are you gonna leave us and go stay over there and forget that we exist have you got something <laughs> in your heart that says no matter what I will come and spend time with filmmakers who are born and born and raised in the UK I yeah will, yeah you definitely. know is that something that is yeah. important to you yeah that's and I want to you know I want to film projects here I want to do projects here develop projects here um, so that's why I've been doing you know rather than just speaking about it trying to be a part of that effective change because we we need more high-end kind of like a balance of commercial and and grounded Mm -hmm. projects um i love top boy i love all of those of those shows but we're we're, we're seeing that we we want more of a nuance i think rap man's um directing something at netflix that that's the kind of stuff i'm talking about it's just something that spreads gives us uh much more of more freedom to play versatile characters absolutely yeah um i like when people have made it Although you might not say you've made it, but to us, you've you've gone pretty far, John. Um, I like to bring them back down to the the beginning. Oh uh, yeah. So tell tell us, tell the all stars in the room, tell the all stars listening as well about those first experiences for you, about those times where you were trying to make an independent film, where you were going for your first role. Do you remember those early days? And are there any that experiences that stand out for you that maybe relate to where our filmmakers are at now? Yeah, all the time. I think I think the most. A lot of people don't talk about this moment in creatives' lives, but it's like, it's times where nothing is happening. <laughs> yes, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if you guys how many, to how, that. Many day, how many days in a row are we talking? Like, come well, on, man. Let's nothing. not let's stop acting as creatives that we're always busy. <laughs> we create the busy for ourselves. That's what makes us different from everybody else. We don't have a curriculum or process like a lawyer, a class to go to. Mm. It's like. What are you doing today? What film are you making today? Right. And I can't lie, a lot of the times just sitting there being maybe be too fearful to start the process, mm-hmm. not knowing how to start, going on a weird Google run about how other people started <laughs> and then not getting the mo- it's it's those cycles. But finally breaking that and being like, Okay, cool, this is the way in which I wanna work. Right. This is my process and my end to the industry. I think that's that's a special moment that I definitely always think back to, for sure. Was there anyone when you were on your Google um, rabbit holes that you thought, that feels like me, but actually now, it, it didn't go that way? A whole bunch of people, because when I was done, it, when I was doing it too, I was young and, and, and I was just dreaming, however. Who are you looking at? Yeah, but you know what I mean, who's, young who's in mind. Who's what are you reading? No, no, the big actors like, you know, the Leonardo big boy. DiCaprio, yeah, DiCaprio. Okay. Uh, you know, all the big boys that you want to, you want to, you know, be with, you know, you mm. want to actually be on their level. But yeah. then I realised, wait, like, it's it's a process. I'm looking at the end goal. I need to. I need to hum. I need to get myself back down to my level, right. and then grow organically from there. And and doing that saved me a whole bunch of Mahala. of stress. Yeah, because <laughs> you know creativity is is hard because you're creating, trying to birth your own careers. At mm. the same time, you're a witness to other creative birthing their ideas and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And it can be, you know, it can be tough. So absolutely, I'm glad you decided to take your own route. Yeah, for a lot of that, man, I'm, 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 I'm aiming as if I'm actually from the States. I'm humble myself. Man. Yeah, it's a very different experience. It's a very different experience. But a, yeah. a really beautiful way of showing that actually you being here today and, and working on this project is making a, a huge difference because it wouldn't have been easy for anyone to get up and try and ring Leonardo DiCaprio, right, to ask him how we did it. But for you to be nah. here today, exactly, working with filmmakers, that's a big yeah. thing. Um, is there any point where the studying of your craft changes? I think some of us can look at the Daniel Kaluuya's, the John Boyegas of the world and say, at this point, they can just do it. 
you know, it's easy. They might have to learn a little thing for their role, but they know what they're doing. Do you find that you studied what you were doing more at the beginning or are you still learning and, and being challenged now at this point in your career? I think you're, I think you're consistently studying um, and you have, you have some points where you're not learning anymore because you're on, on the job. Mm. But I think at, at this point, because I am very specific in the kind of roles I go for as well, I like mm. a challenge. I don't like playing myself. Right. Most of the time when people meet me, I want them to be able to be like, yeah, he's not really, he wasn't like that on yeah, screen. Yeah, yeah. I like doing my job. Mm. So that in itself, each role comes with, you know, it comes with a challenge. There's always something to, something new to learn, someone new to learn about, or something about the character that you need to, you know, study more into, so. Have you ever had really terrible moments on set? Have you <laughs> had moments where you're like, I can't do this, like get yeah. me out of here, sort of like stress. Yeah. How do you get over those? <sighs> Sometimes it can just be embarrassing and you have to go through the you have to go through the, the, the rocky path of it. Yeah. But sometimes it's like it leads to it leads to magical moments like a time on set where uh, on Small Axe with Steve McQueen yeah. uh, where I'm supposed to react to my to my dad, seeing my dad for the first time being being beaten up. Right. Um, and it was at the end of the day, I was hungry, we had waited for like a few hours and some scenes got prioritized on top of that scene okay. so by the time they got to my scene it was kind of spontaneous and i'm like emotionally not not ready for it and i did it's steve mcqueen so at the same time i'm like i'm not trying to tell steve, steve mcqueen like i'm not feeling it right my, my <laughs> yeah. eyes are dry like bro like there's no, i'm not thinking about nothing like yeah, that yeah. and i done it once and it was dead it was like it was act, the acting that you do when you're just trying to autopilot it and yeah. get out of the room mm -hmm. i wasn't really there i wasn't really feeling it and I brought, brought Steve to the side. And I was like, I'm going to have an honest moment with you. I'm not, and someone in my position is not allowed to say this, but I don't know how to do the scene. Okay. And he had an earnest moment with me, emptied the whole set, got everybody out. And he told me a story that was personal to him right. that related to the scene. Right. After he told me the story, I was like, get out of here, roll that camera, man. <laughs> roll that camera right now, I'm ready. You know? <laughs> so I guess over the years, more comfort in my own skill set to be able right. to explore my skill set has definitely been a big change. And do you feel like there's always that person on set to do that? Is there always a Steve McQueen that you can lean on? That's that's why that's one of the reasons why this initiative is right. so important because it's not just about being from the same place someone someone is in. We have mm -hmm. many people who are of, of different backgrounds that yeah. you can still relate. Mm -hmm. It's just about having that element to you that that has come from that experience right. to a certain extent that that understands. Um, and then by then you will know on set you you'll be a unique person because. Right. In Hollywood, unfortunately, to date, you know, it kind of has been the same kind of systematic yeah. rules. Mm -hmm. But just being that genuine, grounded person who knows of your crew's world and of your actor's world, mm -hmm. and you can relate to them in that way. In Hollywood right now, you know, it's a scary to you, you'd be special. Even with everything that you've done up until this point, John, is there still something that just lives inside of your brain that you think it hasn't happened yet? And I really want this to happen for me. Everything. Is it? <laughs> yeah. we still got a long way to go. God grants me the days. You know how this life yeah. is crazy. Yeah. But, you know, I think I think there's there's a, a lot more to do. Hence why I, you know, started up my production company. Yeah. Um, and I've involved myself in fashion and, and various other things. I just like exploring the stuff that, you know, I also like to consume and I have an actual creative interest in. So there's a lot more. A bit of a personal one. I'm mm. hoping that a lot of people go through this as well. How do you manage that? How do you manage being present in what you're filming now or what you're producing now, but still knowing that there's an endless shopping list of things that mm. you know that you want to accomplish in your time that you're here? Mm -hmm. How, what, do, what are the tools that you use or how do you just manage being able to pace yourself I think, through all of that? I think it's a continuous journey and I think, you know, I'll be honest, now I don't have it figured out because it's like balance. Um, a balance that you have to kind of fine tune. I think there, I had a, vi I have a vi visions for my life, yeah. you know, since I decided to do this, I've always, each year there's been a vision, each year there's been a goal, but life sometimes doesn't respect, nope. it doesn't respect you sometimes. <laughs> like, you'd be like, I've got this vision, I've got this goal, and life is just like, shut up. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. know, I've, 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 I'm now learning with the process to keep an element of, of my brain open to this, okay. this roller coaster, you know? Um, because I, 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 I want to adapt mm -hmm. genuinely mm -hmm. and, and adaptation comes from when you're exposed to certain things. So I, I keep it there. Yeah. Tell us about the last six months of working with our lovely All Stars, who I had the pleasure of meeting upstairs just briefly. Um, had you mentored before? Did you know what that process was going to take? And if you had to rate yourself out of 10, John Boyega? 
How good of a mentor are I you? Think, Don't think, ask them to nah, give you a number. You know what I mean? No, I no, think. no. We want your own personal <laughs> self critique. Thank you very much. Out of ten, how do you think you did? I'll ask I them think, later. I, I think I'd give myself a cool seven. <laughs> No, that sounds like you're trying to walk the line of oh, yeah, not being too cocky. I, oh, but yes, also, absolutely. No, your real answer, how do you think you did? I think like maybe an eight. Maybe an eight's good. Maybe an eight's good. You know, I feel always, like you've got to ask him again. It's going to be a nine. It's definitely a nine. Maybe definitely a nine. <laughs> to it's be honest, I was, a, I was an 11. Uh, but I, I've, I've, this is a, a side of myself that I've kind of like been exploring and I, and I quite like it because I've always been the student, you know, um, I was under Femi Organs at Identity Drama School, yes. Teresa Early at Theatre Peckham, mm -hmm. and worked at Kilburn. And so I know how it feels on this side, but on the flip side of somebody mentoring is different. But I'm also, you know, I'm not alone. There's loads of good people from Bounce Cinemas and, 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 a, and a few good individuals that have yeah. been here to help me on the journey. Yeah. I want to know how you struggled though. Were there moments within the six months where you felt like you didn't have the tools that you needed to give the filmmakers? Or were there moments where you had to give a bit of tough love and say, actually, that might not be the best way to do it. What were those moments for you where you really had to find a different part of yourself to make sure you were being the best mentor to these guys? I think it would be our last session. I oh, think what I, happened? Why I, are you I looking in I, their eyes deeply? Yeah, because, you know, they were there. <laughs> yeah, so. But I think it would be our last session in, in, in terms of, for me, I always say the one word that came up to me when seeing them from between the first session and, and the second was change. There was just change in their eyes that meant that I knew that you lot had been through some stuff. Mm. You had struggled. Because the first time I saw them, they were like, oh, we can't wait to get on set. <laughs> we can't wait to film this and we're going to do it like this and we're going to have this and that. And then the second time I, I saw them, there's still that motivation, but it's kind of like, yo, this is real. Like, I understand how real <laughs> this industry... The scratching in the back of their head is peak. When you yeah, that, yeah, you know, you, but, but they still had the motivation to want to continue. And for me, that made me proud because I was just like, wait, is this a longevity moment? Like, is mm. this, does this mean that these guys are here to stay? Yeah, you know, because yeah. that's, a, that's another problem we have in our industry that we can get people in, but staying is another issue because the stress Absolutely. is the stress. Absolutely. Um, but to, to find that even though through their individual um, films and the filmmaking process, even though they were stressed out <laughs> in, in getting it done, they came back battered, but they were like, okay, more. We want to learn more. And that's what, I, you know, that, that in itself made me go, all right, this is a good mental moment. Did you learn anything that you could take into what you're doing in your world from yeah. working with the All Stars? Yeah, I learn. I, I learn every day working with, especially people who are on their way and upcoming. Right. There are moments that I genuinely missed out on, mm -hmm. and lessons that I genuinely missed out on. Um, it didn't stop success, but I still got to learn it. Yeah. Um, and then being, especially being being open to a process, um, work ethic, right. watching these guys go from. The transition they were the, the position that they were in before mm -hmm. to now mm -hmm. it it just reminds me of the of the work we will have to continuously do absolutely mm -hmm. all right we um we're going to come to the audience with some questions so please do have some in your mind i think we've got time for a couple of questions in the audience i know the first question is always hard so have a think um, but first before we do that we've kept this event quite small but there are young creatives in the all-star community who are listening live um, on the Converse All Stars Discord. So we're gonna to get to a couple of questions. We've got one from Australia for you, John, from Parry, who says, how do you define taking risks as an actor or a filmmaker? Hmm. Um, I would define that in various ways. And I'll, I'll, I'll use one of my filmmakers as an example, Lorraine. <laughs> yes, I'll use you as an example. <laughs> um, in, our, in our last session, I, I kind of found out that Lorraine had to put her foot down in order to get her film made. Right. Creatively, she felt very passionate about the direction in which her film was going. But unfortunately, logistically, it, there was there was some struggles. Right. And there was kind of like that moment where she had to stop being the goody two-shoes actress. She had to stop being the goody two-shoes creative yeah. and step out and actually, you know, you know, art imitating life mm -hmm. and, and fight for her project. <laughs> right. um, that in itself for me was, was, was a moment where I was just like, you know what? It's a good thing. Can I just say, don't think Lorraine's sweet. She just winked at me. Just yeah, no, that's she. Yeah, Lorraine, yeah. She Lorraine knows what she's sweet. doing. She, you know she, what you're it's, doing. It's very important, especially moments where I've kind of been confused about whether to stand up for myself right. or to play internal, play mm -hmm. the long-term game. Mm -hmm. And I think that just continuously seeing the challenges that they go through on this level yeah. still stands for other levels also. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we've got a question from Victoria, who's also listening on Discord in Los Angeles, who says, when do you know when to say no to certain projects when you are first starting out? Oh, um, I think I think when first starting out, I said yes to whatever put me in the creative space. That's it. 
be in the right position to learn, to grow, to be beside other individuals yeah. who are motivated by the same thing and be a servant to this, you know, be a servant to the game before you want to try and be a leader, you know, Absolutely. just be there. Um, working under individuals is a, is a safe space for you on your on your journey up to, to, to learn. And, and that's something that I, I did and I continuously do. That's a brilliant answer. Um, no one ever answers those questions well, though. Oh, is it? How do you get into the industry at the beginning? No one really gets them. Oh, yeah. That was strong. I mean, it was a process. You know what I mean? It's a process. And I feel like we're in a room where I feel like a lot of people can relate to what that mm. process is at the early That's stage. Excellent advice. Um, so we're going to get to questions in the room now. Has anyone got any questions they'd like to ask John? Yes, we have one at the front here. Thank you, Lou. Lou's going to come to you with a microphone. Thank you, Lou. Hello. Um... So I've just started, I actually went into identity because of you. And um, I had got to the last round of a chemistry test for a Netflix show and didn't make it. I want to ask if you've ever gone to the last round and how you dealt with the rejection of the loss. Yes. Um, I feel like there was a time in my career I was getting to the last round of everything, wow. but not getting it. I'll double down on that. I used my student loan money from uni. I dropped out after seeing Johnny Depp on set on my uni because we, you know, our university, they used to film a lot of movies on set. I dropped out of uni after seeing that because I was just like, I want to do it. Yeah. I went to LA. I auditioned for The Maze Runner. I'm not sure if anyone's yeah, yeah. ever seen that movie, The Maze Runner. So before you guys saw that glorious movie, <laughs> John Boyega's broke ass, was in LA. <laughs> Sleeping on my friend Damien, I love you. Sleeping on Damien's couch. Walking from uh, Hollywood Boule Boulevard to Sunset Gower Studios every day, bro. And I know how it is. When you're getting closer and closer to the role, you smell the money, innit? It's when it's oh, in mate. It's when it's you in the smell test the money. You know, the first audition, it was in like a, a room with wooden panels and no roofing. And then the last auditions are like, it's you're in the studio change. now. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's a change. And you still, you, you know, that's the frustrating thing about our industry is that we know we could get that one job and it could be like that. Right. But unfortunately, a lot of the times you come close to it and then and then, and then then you go back and, and, and that hurts. But what I, to get over that pain, I've I done research, I got, I got educated. I spoke to actual casting directors and sometimes it's got nothing to do with your acting abilities. In fact, a lot of the times to make it to that stage, you being a good actor or not is kind of proof that you're good. That's why we're bringing you back. There's something about what you're doing. But a lot of the times I had to just educate myself to realize that there are other perspectives that my insecurity won't fathom. Mm. My insecurity as an actor is going to be like, maybe I'm not good enough. Mm. Maybe I'm ugly. Maybe that's what I mean. <laughs> but whereas in the reality, the casting director is just like, yo, he was great and, they, and, and, and he was great, but we need this person or mm. the role is now set here or the director has a different vision, you know? And so I had to understand that in order to keep on going just to find which one will finally accept me. But congratulations about getting to the what, yeah. second Thanks, to last. Bro. That's very important. Nice. Congratulations. Nice, bro. Do we have any more questions in the audience from anyone? I would like to ask a question. Don't be shy. Put your hands up if you would. <laughs> ask me your name and, and your question, please. Hi, John and Melissa. Nice um, I think everyone admires your work for, you know, platforming black talent, um, like what you're doing here with Converse. Um, and there's been a lot of talk in the industry about colorblind um, casting and things like that. And I was wondering if you would be interested in sort of joining a period drama, maybe like Bridgerton, oh, where- absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Because I wasn't looking at you when you spoke, I was like, who is Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, I, no, I, I, I would. I'm, I'm, I'm all about versatility. That's what we were taught, um, especially in drama school. We were taught about roles that wouldn't necessarily come our way, that we were still, you know, trained to, 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 try, and, um, to try and portray. And so, yeah, definitely, I would, I would love to be in things that are, are more nuanced. And I think, you know, after this period of doing Star Wars and being on quite a strict kind of eight-year contract and being out of that, you know, my man feels like a football player, you know, well, what team, what team, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I feel like definitely I, I have more space to things that are different and, and things that are definitely colourblind, for sure. Awesome, thanks very much. Thank you, Thank you very much. You. I was going to say, um, you made a video on your Instagram a while ago about, during the pandemic, maybe like in the first couple months when lockdown started, mm. and you did a voiceover with your, do you remember? And it was about. I was, was doing about, all sorts of nonsense. I yeah, can't you remember. were. But it was about. I hired um, a whole team for that nonsense. It was like a call out for how much we love our barbers. 
Oh yeah. And I, I watched the whole video and it wasn't until you switched to your normal voice at the end that I realized it was you talking the entire video. Yeah, I actually do quite a lot of animation that people don't really know about. It was so phenomenal. I just like I just like doing different voices and accents. That's the, the Is fun there of it. Is anything that you care to share with us here? No, 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 I'm all right. I think uh, you have to pay for a ticket. It's the <laughs> Nah, you know them wins there. Um, but no Alicia, to answer your question, if you do have a little scroll down John's Instagram, there is a video of him in, the, in his Bridgerton voice that he just gave us a little <laughs> sneak peek of, and it is fantastic. Oh, thank you, love. It has been such a pleasure to speak to you. Nah, today, you too. John. Good to see you. Um, I was going to say, I saw, I've, I've met you before, you know. Oh, this is but I was scared. I was scared to approach you. I, I'll be honest. Oh, this is so I was awkward. scared Where to come we? up and introduce me. We were in Nigeria. You met me in Nigeria. Yeah. Say hello. Hi, John. No, no. Hey, Carol. No, no, it wasn't like it wasn't <laughs> like that. And to be honest, it was some years ago. So at that stage, you know, I was still coming up and I saw you and bro was there. And OK, let me just know. put this out there because it sounds like I don't say hello to people unless they're No, no, famous. no, she does. She does. You you didn't catch my eye. I was okay. just like, you know, when you see someone, you're like, oh, they're with their bed. You don't want to come up. And I was just like, OK, I see you from a distance. But it's actually good to have a sit down with you for real. It, is, it has been yeah. an absolute honour to sit down with you. I've Love. never seen you converse in this way. I didn't do that on purpose, I swear. <laughs> um, no, I swear I didn't. I swear. Um, and you are extremely articulate and the, the knowledge that you've shared with us today in this room, I feel like everyone, I speak for everyone, I say I'm very privileged to be able to sit down with you and for you to share that. And mm -hmm. we are so happy that you're doing the work that you're doing. Not yeah, and, 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 and best of luck to everyone as well. Like, you know, I, 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 I hope for this to continue to grow so that we go from five to 10 to way more people getting involved in this. But, and I know, I know it's a struggle too. Like I kind of like, also like to speak to the stress side of this, you know, the stress side of being a creative. I just wanted to give you a lot, just that rub on the back, you know, that's that motivation. Just keep going, keep mm. going, keep finding yourself, keep educating yourself and then take care of your mental health as you're going through that process. Absolutely. Have your balance. Please creatives, take your rest, drink your water and mind your <laughs> a round of applause for John Boyega, please. A huge thank you as well to Converse All Stars in attendance. Thank you to our All Stars listening on Discord, and thank you to those that are watching and listening later on, guys. It's been a pleasure. My name is Julia Danuga, and we'll see you guys all very, very soon. Thank you so much. Oh, it's nice to find you, you know. <laughs>